This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 668. Tuesdays, we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, a member of the Chikarmi. And uh, we are here at Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The uh, cross-section of uh, what's next in professional wrestling. I'm working on that. I'm working on that a little bit. But anyways, we got a crew with us tonight. First of all, of course, we do have from Monroeville, PA, home of the Monroeville Zombies, which is a fake hockey team from um, Zach and Murray make a porno, is Ooh. the Riz. Hey, Sorg, you know you can get Corey from Corey in the house for $85 to sing happy birthday. I have no idea who that is. You should. You know what? <laughs> you know what? You, you watch it or I'm going to give Virgil your phone number again. Mm. I will never do that again. Sort of. <laughs> well, it was wasn't me that did that. So, I know, but I did. I did. Just... I did place you next to him for an entire day at, yeah, a, at, a, at, a, at Steel City Con. And so. I still, I, I will never forgive you for that. Sort of. What's the score? Also with us, he is our friend in the mainstream media, and he's going to be talking. He's boomboxing with his money in the bank. <laughs> This is what everybody's going to do with their Money in the Bank briefcase. I just have a straight briefcase I keep audio equipment in, and it's just going to be my boombox. Just looking for someone with their replica belt at the uh, wrestling show for me to cash in on. Jeez. Because that's a rule. That is a rule. The replica replica Money in the Bank leads to the replica cash in? Is that it? Always. Okay. Always, at all times. Yeah, watch out for yourself. Don't complain when I El Cabong Cabong you over the head with my... (laughs) Child's money in the bank brief. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is uh, going to uh, fill us in on a lot of the alternative professional wrestling this week. That's got everybody very, very happy. Um, uh, also with us, our friend from the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Dave Potner, joining us once, a ma- once again. Hey, Sorg. Thanks for having me. And I'm going to start my training for the next race, just like our truth I'm going to get a woman to carry on my back so I can run around like he does with Carmella. Oh, man, some of that is very dangerous if we take that yeah. out of context. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, pro wrestling. What What the hell? Uh, but anyways, this is uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and you guys are all joining us, of course, here in the chat room on Facebook Live and some other formats as well. But the Facebook Live is where we are trying to pay attention to you guys during the show. But anyways, uh, you can do that as well. We're here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time, more or less, depending on our technical uh, difficulties. Getting online, Facebook sometimes does not play nice with us. I apologize for the lateness tonight. Uh, But you don't care if you're on a podcast because it's whenever you hit play. Uh, But you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including this and other shows that we have going on. Not as many right now, but we are scheduling Indie Mayhem Show to return with some exciting guests. Maybe I'll talk about later in the show. Uh, But you can subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on your favorite podcast, uh, Catcher, Player, etc. And you can ask your Google Home or your uh, Amazon. Amazon Echo to play the Wrestling Mayhem show on either Google Podcast, TuneIn, or whatever you might have connected to that device. Um, and you can drop us a line at that email address. Good times! Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com 412206WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Facebook us on our Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. And hit us up every Tuesday. No, I already did that part. No. Nope. Nope. No producer. Say it tonight. again, sword. No pro- You know what? Every Tuesday, 9 p.m., we're here. We're here. Um, actually, next week, I won't be here. And I yeah, think you won't be. Matt Carlins, I think we're still on for you replacing me in the seat, in the hot seat, right? I've been training for weeks. You've been training for weeks. Well, this is fun. Well, I didn't want yeah, to overburden. I've been doing verbal calisthenics. <laughs> verbal calisthenics. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to stretch you out for the night next week. But uh, um, I did. I did tap uh, Dutters to, um, to handle the awesome cast. So uh, that sword, will be what. Don't 
Don't say that phrase. Wrong phrasing? Oh. I'm, phrasing. I, well, we were talking about porn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. a, a night of unfortunate phrasing. Listen, yeah. <laughs> listen, we were at the Pittsburgh Business Show a couple weeks ago doing the awesome cast. And of course, there was a Pornhub story, as there is. And she was pulling up Pornhub like at the conference. So I just kind of yelled at the conference, she's on Pornhub right now. And a little bit of looks. A little bit of looks. Hey, I was desperate to get attention out there. Anyways, uh, speaking of attention, thank you to our Patreon supporters that are giving us some attention at patreon.com slash wrestling damn show. Our uh, fan of the show $1 level Patreons. Our friends Bo Diggity! Woo! <laughs> There's like some sketchiness happening with the connection <laughs> and people keep going in and out. Uh, Bo Dig, I'm sorry. No, I said that one. Woo! Ed Burke, no, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and then Matthew and Jen for Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment and Team Hammer Fist. I need to switch that for easy saying. And our friends at the Pocket Club five dollar level, you guys are getting some special, extra special stuff. We had Ronnie Starks giving a little bit of a shoot interview last week. Who do we have on last or a couple weeks ago? Uh, who do we have last week? It was, it was Gory was the week before. Last week was it's escaping me right now. Well, we did something cool with them, I remember. Um, <laughs> but um, all of that, um, they, they get all that at that level, including our friends Bradley Brothers, Doc Remini, Dave Ponder of the Tidy Shutter what? Podcast, Kyle Turner, and ah! Daniel Towery, and our friends at the Pizza Club $10 level, Ryan Clark at $13, and at the manager level, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. You guys can help keep the lights on here. Keep the mayhem rolling at uh patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show i've been trying to roll out those after darks uh with those exclusive interviews um on thursdays for you guys let me know if those you've been digging that uh if the timing works for you guys especially since we haven't had an indie mayhem show for a couple of weeks but again those will be coming back mid june at this rate so go check that out um so this is where i'm going to give mr carlin's the floor because i think am i mistaken that mr carlin's is the only one that got to see double or nothing is that is that correct? That's only me. I think uh, legally. Le- oh no! Oh, yeah. Wow. Don't admit to it. Don't admit to it. Don't admit to that. But though, though, partner, did you watch it too? Then uh, I've watched clips of it. Okay. I didn't watch the whole thing. The only match I completely saw was the um, Young Bucks and um, Lucha Bros match. And listen, parts of it are all over the. I- I'll be honest. I-, I watched a lot of the Twitter clips that have been going around. So I've seen things like, yeah. you know, Brits Brits kicking the braid off of uh, Kylie Ray. Awesome King. Awesome <laughs> Kong's return. I watched the uh, speech mm-hmm. after the Rhodes Brothers match. I did watch the entire pre-show. Yeah. So. Um, and honestly, I couldn't have watched it even if I paid for it right now. So, uh, timing wise and everything, but, um, but, but you, okay. So you guys did watch it. Uh, guys, I went and picked up the pizza from slice on Broadway today. And our, 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 you know, our guy that usually, you know, we talk wrestling every once in a while when something big has happened. He's like, dude, did you watch the AEW thing? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't get a chance to yet. He's like, watch it. I'm just like, mm-hmm. it's like, it was some life changing shit. Uh, so, um, well, I guess, uh, Matt, I promised you the floor here first. Uh, let me know your yeah. general thoughts, any highlights, and, and then we'll go to you, Dave, or if you want to even, uh, pop in on that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, my, I, now that I've had a few days to really think about it, my, my general thoughts is that, uh, I, I did really, really like the show. I thought All In was better, um, especially from a production standpoint. Um, and we can get into the the television production aspect of it in a in a minute here, because uh, Sorg, if you saw you know if you saw the pre show, then you have at least a, se- a semblance of what was going on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, all all the wrestling was was good to great. Um, yeah, it, 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 you could definitely tell that there are uh, production wise, um, there are some kinks that still need to be worked out. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, if it's, you know, as long as they're paying attention to the things they're supposed to be paying attention to, uh, they'll be able to iron all that stuff out and and move forward with it. Um, I, I think the the thing that really stood out to me was just like, you, you know, you've got like half of the show and I'm like, you, you know, this is good. This is good. I'm enjoying this. And it's like once you get to uh, Cody and Dustin, everything beyond from that point on is is awesome. And everyone who's on the show from that point forward feels like just 
a huge star, like as big as a star as anyone else in professional wrestling right now. So from that side of the coin, I mean, I think, I mean, AEW got a lot accomplished during that show because they not only established, you know, the elite, you know, and kind of reinforced, you know, the, the specialness of that group. But then you've got, you know, not only, you know, Dustin Rhodes, who's now is beyond just having a one shot deal. Now he's, you know, moving forward for at least one more match. Um, and then you have MJF who comes out to interrupt uh, Bret Hart, you know, and Hangman Page during their segment. He comes off looking like a huge star. And then to close the show, you've got John freaking Moxley coming out of the crowd and he looks like a huge star. So, you know, they come out of the show with like 10 or so guys who just look, you know, like I said, who just feel like as big a stars in professional wrestling as anyone else out there and any other fed on the face of the earth. So from that aspect, they did a great job. And they so clearly set up, you know, two pretty good matches going forward. You know, I think a lot of people are excited to see Hangman versus Jericho and um, Omega versus Moxley are both matches that I think a lot of people will be looking forward to. I'm guessing they're going to do those at All Out, which is coming up at the end of August when they go back to Chicago. Now, getting into the production side. Now, sorry, I'm going to slap my credentials on the table here and I'm going to tell everybody I've been working in television production in one form or another <laughs> for a good 20 years. So I'm not just sitting here, you know, flapping my gums about this. There were points during the show, especially during the pre-show, where it felt to me like the television production side was about to go off the rails. Mm -hmm. It felt like there were points where the announcers clearly didn't know where they were supposed to be going next. Um, there was a lot of confusion during the, especially during that battle royale during the pre-show. That, I mean, for me, that was the low point. It felt so yeah. disorganized. Um, you know, the, the ring announcer is talking, the announcers are talking, nothing feels coordinated, nothing's kind of, had nothing, none of that smooth, you know, Royal Rumble kind of feel that I'm sure they were hoping to get. It was just all over the place. Um, it, it was still, I mean, it was still okay. Um, you know, you know, whatever. I mean, as far as the talent in the ring, I mean, some of the guys, you know, were better than the others. Not all of those guys did it for me. Um, once, you know... <laughs> And look, Alex Mar Marvez, okay, <laughs> the guy who's <laughs> who's riding shotgun with Excalibur. Um, first of all, let me say this: Excalibur, Excalibur. I did not know much about your work. I was not familiar with you. You, my friend, are awesome. You are one of he the is. best pro wrestling announcers on under God's hot mm -hmm. sun, mm -hmm. and there's no doubt about it. And now everybody knows it. So, and and you know what? Another thing too. If Excalibur is not there for that show, we are probably not feeling as good about things today as we as we could have. If it, I don't know if anybody else could have pulled that thing out of the just. It felt like it was going in a bad to a bad place. It, but it, Excalibur kept it on track. And I, I, I mean, and, and another thing when when Jim Ross shows up for the main show itself, I never bit felt more comforted and reassured <laughs> the sound of Jr's voice than I did at that moment. He just he just sat down and he just, just, just it didn't even matter. He could have known no one on the show. He could have known none of the moves. He could have had no clue. But just his presence and his energy made everything feel important. And then Excalibur was there to just fill in the blanks. Alex Marvez, the Orange Cassidy pro wrestling commentary, <laughs> acting like whoa, he did whoa, not whoa, give whoa, a whoa, during the whoa, entire show, whoa, acting like he couldn't no. care to be anywhere else absolutely stunk all right he had no business on that How show you could listen to him for five minutes you could tell he just didn't have the voice for it like certain announcers you know they'll be deadpan and subdued if you listen to graves on raw you know sometimes he sounds really subdued but his voice is such that he cuts through it anyway marvez is muttering to himself god knows what else i mean i'm sure he's a nice guy he's obviously you know respected in the field of football writing i don't know how that lends itself to professional wrestling although i think he's covered it in the past it just wasn't the fit he's not the guy and maybe he'll grow into the role and he'll be really good you know three six months after they get on regular television but they don't have time for that crap so 
I don't know why he was there. I mean, it's uh, they did rehearsals. They all we would shut up about the rehearsals they were doing with this three man team. So I don't know why they they threw him out there like that. Uh, I don't think he was ready for it. But um, how yeah. Dare, how dare you so wow. soil the good name of Orange Cassidy? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to properly how frame the impression you. I got from from his presentation. So, so and you know what? Orange Cassidy not giving an F in the middle of a wrestling match? Freaking awesome. You know, Alex Morgan not giving that's an F the entire thing. No good. You know? So so and and I want to poise poise this with you know, you working in television production, myself working in I I would admit lower end productions with like i pay per views and Twitch streams with pro wrestling or or hard, corporate hide, hardware cups and and commencements and stuff. Uh, live production is not easy. Right? No, like it's hard. We, we're we're yeah. we're not saying this as if as, as if know it alls for this. Like they, they're not doing an easy thing <sighs> with as many moving parts that goes into a a, a live televised uh, uh, pro wrestling show with all the bells and whistles that this one would have. But also they've had issues before. The the it seems like every time they went live for an announcement, there would be some questionable technical issues too. Um. So, but and again, confusion confusion about where they were going. It just, there were yeah. points where it felt disorganized there's this notorious spot like right before cody and dustin's match when they're getting ready to set up the video package for the match and they come to the booth the three man the three shot the booth and like jr's like what are we doing next and i'm like how can this happen like Mm -hmm. i know there are people working behind the scenes at aew who have directed professional wrestling shows before they've got veterans of professional wrestling television production on their team they know how to keep this thing on track And and it makes you you know, I know people don't want to hear us, but it makes you appreciate WWE oh, and their like fanatical obsession with details to yep. the point where it becomes this rigid, you know, you know, unbearable thing. But you know what? When it comes to the production side of things, you need that. You know, the wrestling and the promo side and the, and the performances of the of the talent. That's where you need to take the handcuffs off. But believe me, when you're talking about the production, you gotta have that thing on lock. Absolutely. It, it, it does feel like this is maybe, I don't think this is the pro- production team we got for All In. This is the production team we'll probably have for uh, AEW moving forward, so they are going to grow into the the, the part. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Do we know if AEW's show is going to be live or pre-taped? Is that is that information out yet? I get the impression it's going to be live two hours every week. Yeah, okay. That works for mm. me. No? Yeah. yeah. Well, I heard a grunt. I heard a grunt. Where, where was that grunt? Well, from? that was that was me grunting in terms of uh, do, having the hard out. Mm-hmm. You know that that to me because that's where Raw had well one of the many places Raw has had issues mm-hmm. was the hard out recently where they they got used to it on SmackDown, but it took them a while to figure out oh. We need to end the show now. Mm-hmm. And you're going to, you know, you're on TNT. You're not going to have an overage. No. You're going to no. have a hard out. No, this isn't WCW where it's an internal company and they can do whatever they exactly. want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm hoping it's, even if it's on a little bit of a delay, you know, I don't mind a tape show. I really don't. SmackDown was perfectly fine watching as a tape show all those years. NXT. Yeah. And uh, you you can pace things better, especially, like you said, yes, this is, like Matt said, there may have been guys who did wrestling before, Mm -hmm. but it was the first time, as far as I know, that this group of people did something as a group of people. And anytime you may have, trained professionals who know exactly what they're doing. But anytime you get a team together for the first time, that's when you kind of need to have the practice and doing it multiple, multiple, multiple times. And unlike, it seems like every other, I don't want to say every other promotion, I'm at least big national ones. They all started off with a TV show and they had their, you know, they were able to get things done and do things on tape and get used to it. And everyone works together. And then you do your big pay-per-view instead of, hey, everyone, pay-per-view live. Thousands of people watching us. Yeah. As they said, look, we had 20,000 in attendance. It's pro wrestling. We round up, right? 
So, um, you know, the little production things, I'm not that concerned about. No, that, that that's something they can grow into. Uh, Alex, is yeah, in the, exactly. Alex Cars is in the chat room uh, saying, you know, question then, if AA, AEW promises a less stressful schedule with dates, then how does that work with a live two-hour show every week? They're probably not going to tour. Remember, uh, WWE does typically Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or some variation of that, right? Um, plus, sometimes people are gone for two to three weeks at a time because of internationals. Like they're gone. Like that. That is a pretty hefty um, situation over there. Um, so I, I think they're just the fact that they're like saying, "Hey, we're going to tape a show." You know, there's no reason for them to travel yet, right? Like to go. Like, is their business going to be touring, or is their business going to be? television wwe f has always been a touring company right um even if it was regional back in the day and then they had a television program that enhanced that um and i think that's the in the dna of the company versus somebody starting off saying we're going to be a television show that's going to get over as a television show right off the bat i, I think um getting back to what dave was talking about about whether they would decide to pre-tape or go live. I think part of the appeal and the part of the reason TNT wants in on AEW is the promise that they're going to be live every week. And that's been part of the pitch um, for WWE when they got their new TV contracts. And that's probably was part of the pitch for AEW too, is that, you know, you know, all these networks are looking for the DVR proof programming. Mm -hmm. um, and that's typically, you know, sports um, or things along those lines. Uh, and pro wrestling can kind of, you know, which likes to straddle the line from time to time. They can, you know, lean back to the sports side and say, like, hey, we're, we're live sports. You know, we're, we're DVR proof. And um, so, that, I mean, that, that I think it would be nice if they could take the time to learn to walk before they run. But I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to go right out of the gates and go try to go live every week and hopefully uh, roll with the punches and whatever little mishaps happen happen um and i don't want to i don't want to harp too much on the tv production side because there was a lot of good stuff about the show too um we'll tell you what let, let's you take a, a moment uh for you guys right now and we'll come back and talk about the actual wrestling because <laughs> we can get on the we can get touchy about uh video production all day right right matt yeah anybody who knows sorgan i knows we could talk about this for like yeah, we can, yeah sometimes stuff, we will so. we will off and <laughs> after the show so you guys don't have to get into this side maybe we should do like a, a production side podcast of some sort like you know oh how, how just, fun would that be a special highly critical it's just all about the criticizing the uh tv production side of wrestling shows you know there is there is a show there is <clears throat> i was actually i was actually thinking about this a little bit there's a show uh, or a video series that a guy named alex Lindsay. he's a guy from pittsburgh that now works out in california he works on like stuff with the white house and the vatican for live streaming um and worked on like episode one at lucas lucas film but anyways or industrial light and magic um but uh he did he started doing a series where he was taking like cnn <laughs> and bbc videos um of their newscasts and judging some of the graphic work and placement and lighting of those mm -hmm. setups uh which i would bad i'm sure you're starting to get worried about that thinking about your day job there a little bit yeah <laughs> so you just don't know you don't know the burden the brain never stops thinking about that's it right. so that's uh, right so i mean i i, I <clears> wonder <throat> you know would people be interested in i don't mayhammer mayhammers if you want to i mean I, I've only been doing the wrestling video in some form for 11 years. And Matt, you've been, you know, doing video for, or you've been doing production for, in some vein for probably about as long as well, right? About 20 years. Credentials are on the table. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Real big with the credentials tonight. So I don't know. If that's something, let us know. Um, it was just an idea germinating a little bit. Uh, but in the meantime, hey, speaking of production, we did a, a really cool thing this past weekend. Um, we had, if I can pull up the right thing here without my producer on hand to do this bit. Uh, we had a pretty cool, cool iPay-Per-View, our first um, iPay-Per-View for Angel Gate. We've done some kind of on the on the down low a little bit um, in, in the past. Uh, but this is the first one uh, that we've done um, kind of with the announcement and stuff going into it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but anyways, hi. Uh, but you no, know, we, we did some cool stuff with Angel Gate Wrestling, and uh, so you can go check that out right now. 
over at Angel. Or, I'm sorry, PWS, PWXAngelGate.com, as well as over at IndieWrestling.us on our Vimeo VOD uh, page. And again, if you don't see it on our IndieWrestling.us page right away, definitely go ch- go check out that Vimeo link on the front page, and that'll get you over there. Uh, we had a lot of really cool stuff going on, including uh, Holiday and uh, Ray Lynn um, in action, uh, Casey Spinelli. Uh, surprise of the start of the night was uh, her winning the uh, PWX title against Ronnie Nicole. There's a little bit of the action there for you guys on video. Episode 12 and 13 of Angel Gate Wrestling. Some great stuff going on there. And of course, some great new releases from our partners, including Fight Society, episodes 29 and 30, including one of the bloodiest matches I think we've ever filmed here with uh, IndieWrestling.us and Sidekick Media Services. Um, go check that out. Uh, we, uh, we had a lot of fun with that. It went live. And I know we had a lot of people um, tweeting us. I know one guy from Massachusetts was very excited about the title change that was watching with us on Saturday night. So go check that out. Angel Gate Wrestling, PG, I'm sorry, PWXAngelGate.com, IndieWrestling.us, however you want to pick that up through any of those formats. And of course, I say Fight Society's on IndieWrestling.us as well. And, uh, and also just finished editing today. I believe it's now just rendering Revenge Pro out of Erie also going up there and coming up on deck for us to get out of the editing farm is, uh, is, uh, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance as well as, um, the, the Sean Fia show will be coming to YouTube. Also check out the Indie Wrestling, uh, YouTube page. We got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, a lot of free matches, including, I believe, the entirety of Stomp Out Cancer is now up, up there. Both years of Stomp Out Cancer. We got a link over there for the American Cancer Society. Trying to help uh, raise some awareness and go check out some more, uh, you know, go check out some more wrestling. See a lot of these guys in action. Because if there's anything we want to do here at Indie Wrestling, we want to make sure we can keep doing this. And we want to make sure you guys experience a lot of these um, newer faces that hopefully you're going to see on the TV, like, hey, there's some guy named Michael Paris that might be popping up on NXT sooner or later. Here, uh, might 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 be a little bit of him on the internet right now. So you better go, not call him that. But just Michael Paris. Yeah, I think they will. I honestly do kind of think they will. And also, Ugh. and also, you can sign up for even more wrestling exclusively over at Indie Wrestling. Dot network is our subscription service with full episodes of uh, full um, full events for Rise with a Y, uh, Uprise exclusively, Black Diamond Wrestling full shows exclusively, and Prospect Pro Wrestling exclusively. And I did have a conversation with a certain mastermind of professional wrestling about bringing some new content over there to IndieWrestling.us. Go check it out. And, uh, and support indie wrestling and support what we're doing over here. All right, back to it. So we talked about the production of AEW's first <laughs> first show. Um, I'm sorry, it's how we're minded here, right? How was the wrestling, guys? Uh, Dave, let's 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 have let's let's have Dave uh, uh, go at it <coughs> for a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have. Like I said, I only watch bits and pieces of it. So uh, I did watch the full Lucha Bros versus Young Bucks match with Ruth. Mm-hmm. Um, and since I've only seen a little bit and she actually have ne- seen neither of the teams beforehand, I had to do a little explanation of, yes, they are real brothers, mm-hmm. um, and a little bit of background. So just so she would know a little bit and it, you know, f- to sit someone who is a wrestling fan, but doesn't know the talent and for them to just watch and get into the match. Mm-hmm. Because it was such a good match, just to watch in the back and the forth, it had it had the flippy stuff, it had the flippy stuff, but it had more than just the, it just wasn't just a bunch of flippy stuff. You know, it was an enjoyable tag team match to watch, which doesn't really happen on Raw or SmackDown, right? Right, <laughs> right. and they, they were really big when they were announcing this match about bringing uh, more of a a. Um, identity to uh, tag team wrestling, but of course, with the the young bucks involved, of course they're going to right. So, exactly, yeah. especially since they're EVPs. I mean, you figure they would really want to push their specialty. Um, uh, uh, Matt, what, well, I'm sorry, actually, I'll go yeah. to this comment here in the chat room. Uh, Alex, okay. or I'm sorry, Tina Keys out there on the West Coast saying that um, no, that was her about getting a message from her sister from 
Lacey Evans for like twenty five dollars. Oh, here no, it is. She, yeah, she enjoyed the Joshi match. Yeah, the Joshi match was pretty awesome, um, especially when you know any of these people. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you know, one thing that was cool about the Joshi match is that each of the wrestlers who were out there, um, they were all very distinct. So you weren't watching. This is going to sound bad, but you weren't just watching like six random Japanese girls run around. Mm-hmm. And they all had like different costumes, different gimmicks, different personalities. So it was easy to, you know, uh, it, it was easy to understand the story that they were trying to tell. Uh, and they all looked awesome. They were as good as, you know, any women's wrestling you'd see anywhere. Uh, some would probably say better, but, you know, that's their opinion. It's hard to say on one sample. And I want to go back to the, the Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. Because I want to just quickly just send props out to one of my favorite wrestlers, and that is Peak Phoenix. There is like everyday Phoenix that you get, who's really really good, and then there's Phoenix who hits everything in a match <laughs> because he's always going for like the absolute craziest stuff you've ever seen. And when he's hitting, it's unbelievable. Like some of the things he did during that match with the Bucks was just like only he can do. Only he's going to try to do stuff that sometimes he isn't able to do, but in this <laughs> match he did it. So and it was great. Um, awesome. Cody and Dustin was, you know, a bloodbath. It was awesome, um, and it was cool too because it wasn't, you know, it's a completely dis- completely unique match compared to, you know, some of the other matches on the show where there's like there's no flipping, there's no, you know. It's not your what you would consider like your modern, you know, indie match. It's you know, two guys who are going out there and they're telling a story and they they're keeping their feet on the ground and they're you know, for the most part, keeping it in the ring. Um, Dustin's you know, Crimson Mask will be legendary for all time. Oh yeah. What um, um, what were your thoughts on that introduction for Cody? With the chair, oh, I loved it. Can, no, I, I loved I, it. Explain to the people that didn't get didn't see this online or 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 watch yeah, this. So, so what, what did he do? So there's like a, a long, you know, the, the the arena goes dark, and there's like a single spotlight um, appears on on a on a throne on the on the stage, and it looks like someone perhaps has broken into Triple H's house and stolen his <laughs> chair and just left it there there on the stage, and then they play Cody's song, and Cody comes out. Him and Brandy, and they kind of he kind of looks at it for a second, uh, and he just kind of like you know turns his head like eh whatever, he walks away, and I was like, and in that moment I was kind of like oh that's kind of cool, that's kind of a little you know eh, I don't need you kind of you know move, and he walks down the ramp, and I figure that's the end of it, and then Brandy goes underneath the uh, ring uh, and and finds a sledgehammer, hands a sledgehammer to Cody, and he stands and he looks at it for a little bit um, as you do if you're pretending to be Triple H. Uh, and then he decides, okay. And then he, he makes a decision in his mind and starts walking back up the ramp with the sledgehammer. And this crowd goes nuts. Cause they are like, they know, you know, what's going to happen. And they're all there. To, they're very good with this happening. And I wasn't sure how this was going to go down. I didn't know how sturdy that, uh, the throne was, but it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, prefabricated. It was straight out of the uh, Dark Force, uh, Dark Forge <laughs> Studios, uh, you know, line of uh, oh, um, creations. And uh, <laughs> you know, he smacked it once on the seat with the sledgehammer, and the thing fell apart and smoke poofed out. So <laughs> everyone um, cheered. There was so, a there was a tweet I, I saw the next day of I wonder how Triple H feels this morning, knowing that he has rent free space inside somebody's head. Well, look here's <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, he started it. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's the one who had to mention AEW at the Hall of Fame. Oh. You know, to get his little dig on Billy Gunn. So let's not forget that Triple H started this. You know, get your name, get my name out of your mouth mm-hmm. kind of thing. So from where I was sitting, this was not, you know, Cody shots fired at WWE. This was Cody you know, firing back, you know, after Triple H had fired a shot at them. And then what happens, you know, on Raw, they decide to do the worst thing you could do and say their name again. So, you know, 
Uh, I mean, who's in whose head, sword at this point? Well, it's it's and and this is this is kind of my take on it. I, I was kind of I was kind of responding to somebody on Twitter under the Mayhem account about how I'm like, oh man, this is completely like ECW. Actually, they're you know WWE completely is helping the fund and back AEW so they can create some competition and have some uh, you know talent and excitement. Um, except this time, it's Paul and Vince doesn't know about it. <laughs> well, I mean, no. No, no. you can't tell First me. All, you can't tell sense. me that Triple H doesn't love what he saw at AEW. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I mean, I mean, it's it's weird because there were. Th- I mean, earlier in the show, there's uh before the women's match, the one with Britt Baker and Kylie Ray and Nyla Rose, um, Brandy Rhodes comes out and she's in her gear. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and she like starts going on and on, and I'm like, she is channeling a lot of Stephanie McMahon right now. <laughs> now, and everyone is like freaking out, thinking she's going to insert herself into the match. Now, she ends up introducing Awesome Kong, which is cool, and then it goes on from there. And Brandy still hangs out at ringside. So there, there was a lot. There's a lot happening, I think, with this. I think Cody and Brandy have a vision for who their characters and their personalities are going to be in AEW. And I think it's going to be Triple H and Stephanie. Like, that's basically just, it's just, basically who they are anyway. This is straight, straight going to do it. And I think, like, the whole Chief Brandy officer thing, I mean, it's it's so on the nose. That's what it is. She's, it, I mean, sure, she has, you know, she has a title in AEW, but she was going to have a title and a job there anyways. You know, the, the purpose of the phrasing it like that is, is meant to evoke that comparison. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they're playing it for parody or if they're playing it to get their shots in on them or what. But, it, I mean, it's all kind of right there for everyone to see. Absolutely. Um, well, on that note, uh, I want to take a moment here. Uh, I I think we're going to t- talk about this. I need to give you a chance to talk about your stuff. There's a lot that happened on this show. We even talk about Dean Ambrose uh, or whatever his name is these days, right? But uh, in the meantime, uh, I, I kind of want to save this half of the show before this insane lightning shuts us off. Uh, but <laughs> but anyways, hey, want to give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting in the, with the perfect pepperoni pizza here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Feeding our Mayhammers there here in studio. When we have Mayhammers in studio, I cannot transfuse it through the internet to our friends tonight, but I would love to. And remember our unofficial campaign. If you have a Broadway in your town, take a take take a take a picture of that sign, Broadway Avenue, uh, and say you want to slice on your Broadway and hit up PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. Um, we are going to go to a quick break and we'll be back as long as this storm doesn't knock us off the internet. We'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Matt Light, the Steel City Heel, the next mayor of Pittsburgh, and I'm here to ask you a very important question. And that question is, do you follow Indie Wrestling US? If you don't, you should. Not only will you get all the big news when it comes to independent wrestling in the universe, in the United States, in anywhere, even here in Pittsburgh, you'll find out all the great information. But not only that, is if you follow them on each platform, you will receive one entry to win tickets to see me headline at the Pittsburgh Improv June 6th, 8 p.m. and June 9th, 7 p.m. So, Instagram, that's one registry. Is it registration? I don't know, but that counts as one. Facebook, that's one. Twitter's one. Instagram and YouTube. Follow all of them and you'll get all different entries and the winner will get tickets to my show. Boom. This is fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. It's a Wrestling Mayhem mm-hmm. show. Completely we, normal. Everything is completely normal. We did not just have a torrential, insane lightning show here in the Pittsburgh area. I did not have to take my wife home so she could Benadryl up because she apparently was allergic to something in strawberry cheesecake. Um, oh. She's a shellfish allergy. I don't know how that worked out, but um, so but she's everything is fine. She's drugged up and asleep now. Uh, but we are back. It is a wrestling mayhem show, and uh, I don't know if anybody's out there in the live bit since we weirdly kind of stopped this in the middle. That was weird. At least like nothing went out in the middle of the show or anything. Knock on wood. But I think everything's past right now. Uh, what's up, Tina? What's up, Alex? Cars and friends on the West Coast, of course, hanging out with us. Uh, uh, and we'll we'll see how this goes for the rest of us. But again, I think 
I didn't check to make sure there's not some because sometimes we have leakage in here in the studio. Uh, but anyways, so um, we've been talking about a lot about AEW, and um, I think I think for the big question this week, I want to fancy book with you guys a little bit. There's a certain guy that used to be known as Dean Ambrose. Moxley. Moxley. Okay. Moxley. Some, somewhat familiar with this guy. Somewhat familiar. So I want you to fantasy book what we know so far. He came out and surprised Chris Jericho at uh, at the end of the pay-per-view. I think it's over the jacket uh, or maybe uh, hit the fern that got killed. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and we also know that there was a promo with New Japan. Matt, did you see the promo with New Japan? Oh, did I? All right. Story time. This promo that's been running to taunt our dear friend Juice Robinson, the IWGP United States champion, the former CJ Parker from NXT, um, who's been reborn in New Japan as this like amazing, charismatic American dynamo. Um, so for like weeks, there's been, uh, you know, he'll, he'll, his match will end and this video will play on their, on their Tron in New Japan. Um, and it's like in a bar, it's dark. You never see the guy's face, but he's got like a knife and he's carving like an hourglass into the bar. And then it just ends and it says time's up. And it says the date of uh, 6-5-2019, which is the date of Dominion or the Super Junior Finals. I think it's the Super Junior Final. That's the Super Junior Final night. Um, so this has been going on. Lord Sorg, I've been watching <laughs> the best of the Super Junior. Perhaps I've told you this. But um, and, and this video has been running every single time to the point where um, during some of the Oblock shows um, over the weekend, uh, Juice Robinson was actually on the English commentary, and they were just not even, you know, they didn't have to wait until a match. This random video would play in the middle of the show, and Juice Robinson would be like, who the hell is playing this video? Come on out. You know, he's getting all fired up. He just gets, you know, progressively more aggravated every time they play it. But they were never revealing who this person was until finally on the um on John Moxley's Twitter feed, you know, the one that was dormant and was never used yeah. the entire time. Dean Ambrose never used his Twitter. Social media. <laughs> and, uh, Amazing. He plays it. He uploads a video. It's the exact same video, except at the very end, this this hourglass uh, logo that um, was a that you know that he was carving into the bar. Uh, it separates into an M and an O and an X, and it just says Mox. <laughs> and my mind is blown because I've been following. Um, New Japan more closely lately, and uh, I've been listening to some podcasts. I've been hearing a lot of guys speculating. People far smarter than you and I, Sorg. Uh, these these podcasters, these high and mighty hoity toity New Japan podcasters, <laughs> speculating on who this person could be because he had like a British Union Jack flag on his jacket. So everyone's speculating. Like every British wrestler under under the sun, they're trying to guess who it is. I've never heard anyone suggest that this could possibly be John Moxley. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even sure if New Japan thought it was John Moxley when they started putting these videos out. Now they could they could say they did, but I, me personally, I, these things this thing's been running for a long time. So I find it really hard to believe. I'm having a hard time accepting that this was the plan all along. It feels like a very happy coincidence. I mean, I'm not complaining. That we're gonna, we're gonna get Juice Robinson versus John Moxley for the IWGP United States Championship. Who do you think is gonna win that one, Sorgi? Huh? <laughs> Gee, I <laughs> wonder. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's going right into the playbook of everybody, every other superstar out there. Is, you know, hitting New Japan, hitting the top prospect place, which right now is definitely AEW, right? Um, yeah. But the question. Thank you for the backstory. The question Sorry, I, I, I have. I can't stop talking about this stupid thing. I felt like it needed explaining. Not everyone's following. No, no, it, thank but... you. No, I think it's appropriate. Uh, what is your dream match for John Moxley beyond this? 
There's so many possibilities. So many already in the chat room. I, I, I should read them since they've already just gone to town with this. And I maybe, love Alex Miller's idea. I, I really want to see this. Um, we have from the chat room already, as we've, we've they they pre precogged our, our question. Uh, John Moxley versus Jimmy Havoc uh, death match. Alex Miller actually. Uh, Jimmy Havoc did respond to one of those tweets. I think it was like, huh, interesting. Um, <laughs> which Tina took. Or, uh, took from Tina. Uh, Tina is liking the brief confrontation that Joey Janela and John Moxley had. I need to catch up. I need. To, I really need to. Put... That wasn't a confrontation. They shared a cigarette on being the elite. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, I being the elite really needs to be part of my watching regimen. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be. Um, Moxley and Nick Gage from uh, Alex Cars. Yes. Um, there's a really good best of Moxley that I think I shared in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. That reminds us, hey, this is what this guy was around the time. And I actually even shared an old IWC uh, match of Moxley and Callahan being really creepy about Daisy Hayes and Delirious uh, in an intergender uh, tag match from like 2009, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Moxley. If they're going to do Mox versus Nick Gage. Mm -hmm. That should be saved for like Shea Stadium. I don't know. Like, <laughs> that should be saved for a huge the death show. match to end all death matches, right? It, like it. I don't know how crazy Mox is feeling these days. He does have a wife now, <laughs> but mm. it feels like that should be like the exploding ring. Right. Mother of all death matches, like in a prison, it should be held in a prison. Um, so Gage has the home court advantage. Um, Sorg, did you see Alex Miller suggesting Moxley versus Orange Cassidy? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see it. Also, Alex Cars wants to see Moxley versus Mike Quackenbush. Okay. Uh, sure. uh, let's see. Uh, well, we're getting Mox and Janela at Fighter Fest. By the way, this Fighter Fest—that's the AEW thing. It's the logo of the Fire Festival, <laughs> which is a we very, which is a fun, <laughs> very indie thing to do. Like, I was like, what is this AIW? Uh, the way they're doing this. Also, Starcast Three already announced in hotel packages. Um, anyways, so uh, what did I miss? Any others on here? I think that's about it. Um, but uh, yeah. So, so now that they've exp expounded all those ideas, do you have any dream matches that are now possible with this new arised John Moxley, uh, Dave, and Matt? I'm not as versed in non WWE wrestling to pull names out, yes. but let me ask for people who were. Just like in sports, you have, okay, let's go for Pittsburgh. You have Steeler fans and you have football fans. Mm -hmm. Vast majority of people watching WWF or WWE are WWE fans, not necessarily pro wrestling fans. Okay. You know, that that's why they're still shocked about, let's say, Nikki Cross, even though she was in NXT, they come up and that a lot, most people watching. And most people in attendance outside of, you know, the four day weekend events. They don't know this person because they watch Raw, they watch SmackDown, they watch the pay-per-views, and that's all they watch. If you get someone who's like, oh, I remember Dean Ambrose. I kind of, okay, the, the Mitch, the plan stuff was kind of wacky. Mm -hmm. They don't know his stuff before. Right. And then all of a sudden he says, oh. There's a guy who used to be Dean. I'll watch him, and all of a sudden you see the blood and the guts and the whole thing. How much of a shock to the system you think that's going to be? I think that's to a lot of people a shock to the system. They're like, oh, that's like, um, that's like I grew up a Batman, and then I watched 1999 or 1989 Tim Burton Batman, and be like, oh, I don't think this is my Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dean Ambrose, no, John Moxley is not your Batman to a lot of people. No, I mean, like, when Ambrose, like, Ambrose's arrival in the WWE system was so long ago, like, even I was not familiar with him before he got into FCW. I didn't know anything about his, like, his deathmatch background. Like, my wife had to show me videos of it. She's like, here's him fighting Drake. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. This is great. So, yeah, he's done some crazy things. Um, if you want to, I'll throw a couple names out for you. since. Mox is dipping his toe into New Japan. Uh, how about Moxley versus Minoru Suzuki? Oh, jeez, uh, yes. Serious man walking the face of the earth. Um, and uh, you know what? Since we've got those three guys in AEW now, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, 
Moxley team up with Janela and Jimmy Havoc. And, uh, you know, let's raise the stakes all the way and let's have them versus the elite, the Bucks and Kenny. Let's do a six man that Jeez. way. I think they could, that, that could be fun. Shoot, can I just have John Moxley and Kenny Omega? Oh, oh, you're getting it. You go, yeah. Someday. It's coming. It better <laughs> be coming. Dump, you don't get dumped off a stack of bingo chips or, or off a stack of poker chips uh, at double or nothing and just let that slide soar. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That cannot slide. So. I'm, I'm assuming that was for the next pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think they're holding that for Chicago. So All yeah, Out. All thing. Out is coming at the beginning of yeah. September. Mark your calendars. Uh, man in Chicago, that's not too far away. I, I man, there's so many potential trips from August to September. I already have vacation booked. Uh, so someone I, in the chat. Well, here's Al, Alex has got ideas. He wants Moxley versus Sammy Callahan. Oh, switchblade! Now, switchblade conspiracy re, reunites. Yeah. All right, or, or explodes. Okay. I guess. Uh, Jeff Cobb versus Moxley from Tina Keys. I was thinking about that one too. Yeah. Um. Marty versus Mox. I don't know if he can pull that off at this point. Maybe oh. Marty is in New Japan, you know, doing the Super Junior for New Japan. So I guess it's a possibility. Is Marty they still, still... Have a working relationship with Ring of Honor, and Marty is still under contract with Ring of Honor? So we're talking about Could Marty. Wait, Marty wait. Skrull, the oh. villain. Hey, how about <laughs> let's get PCO versus Mox? Let's get that to happen. <laughs> Why get not? That, that probably can't happen. That might be asking too much. Oh, jeez. There's a lot um, of contractual hurdles to If get you can book that. Moxley in PWG, I'll be buying that ticket in a heartbeat. I don't think they could. Could they? It'd be a $300 I mean, ticket at that point. Well, my understanding of this deal with AEW is that uh, the, the, he's, well, I mean, he is working some independents. Um, yes. He's working Northeast Wrestling for a, like a bunch of shows. Uh, and he's doing, obviously, new, some New Japan. Um, but I get the impression he's going to be fairly exclusive to AEW once they get up to full speed. So everything between now and the fall when the weekly TV starts, I think, is and, when you're going to get your best chance of seeing indie mocks. Yeah. And then after that, we'll see what happens. And I want to point out, AEW Northeast Wrestling, we've seen them there. I've filmed one of their shows for them uh, when they're up here in Niles. And I think our, our boy Rob has done one, too. These guys regularly get people that are kind of regulars to WWE, like Renee Young is on one of these uh, appearing. Yes, John Moxley is on that. It makes sense. Uh, Corey Graves is making appearances on this stuff. Uh, Kurt Angle has been regularly uh, t- making appearances. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, let's see, let's see. We got John Moxley versus Darby Allen. I'm seeing Moxley versus, I would see. Pentagon Jr. He's going to do Pentagon Jr. Or one of these. Pentagon NWs, Jr. So. Well, here's, there's, there's this one that's like John Moxley and is uh, formerly known as in the middle, FKA Dean Ambrose. And I keep reading it as John Moxley versus Dean Ambrose. And I get confused. Uh, that's the one with Renee Young on it. I can actually show you guys this poster. That show also has Booker T, Mick Foley, and Kurt Angle. So, yeah, Six Flags slam fest is that happening out of six flags guys um yeah they have let's see here's a david arquette is on a show <laughs> these, yeah these guys kind of go way over the top uh as far as names uh going on over there jay king Lar is always on these billy gunn funaki this one has yeah. the lucha brothers kurt angle billy gunn jerry Lawler, christy hemi funaki yeah they any w does big oh shows, this is the one so. in niles this is the one uh not too far from us a couple hours yeah, away actually, that um uh, and that uh moxley uh, Pentagon Junior matches, I believe, going to happen in Poughkeepsie, New York. That's right, Mad Mike. That's right. <laughs> get your tickets now. So, I mean, I think the door is open for like some of the high level indies to get them. So maybe like you know, yeah. maybe yeah. PWG, maybe AAW, uh, Chicago area can can bring them in. So we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. You never know. Well, you never well, know. Matt. Well, Matt, let me ask you: Do you know if the contract starts now? He signed with. AEW, or it's a matter of I signed a contract with you. It will be effective starting, you know, yeah. September first. Maybe yeah. Until with until then, yeah, I'm going to do all these indies and everything else because I'm not like that way. He yeah. can do this stuff with New Japan until he's under contract. That, and then, that, is, that is curious because we don't we don't have TV until the fall. Uh, right. Britt Baker is going to be on a show here in Pittsburgh uh, soon, and she's an exclusive. You know exclusive mm-hmm. AEW. Um, I, I, I got to think, you know, if and especially if they're only going to do one TV taping live a week, um, that leaves the, 
door open for them to just go do whatever they want on the weekends to if they want to do more gigs billy gunn is everywhere i saw billy gunn in tennessee a couple weeks ago you know i mean they're not actively doing anything except preparing for television in the fall so i mean you got to be careful i mean you, you look at it from AEW side um once you're up to full speed on tv they may not want to risk injuries to their right. talents you know makes sense going makes around sense. so it all depends if the compensation's right then they probably have no problem working you know one show a week and then going home and resting so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how things kind of shake out once they uh get up to full speed because right now it's hard to tell who's you know who's the true full-time aew guys and who are guys who are just kind of being brought in here and there absolutely um it's interesting to see what's going on there indies uh production i know we have a lot of thoughts uh, this week. Hey, you, Matt, I think I know what we're going to do for our uh, After Dark today. Why don't you and I have a conversation about wrestling productions and, and distribution and things? I think we could have some fun with that. I know we poked at that a little bit earlier, if you have time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll look out it. for that. That's, that great. that's for our Pocky Club members. Uh, we'll be coming up here. We'll record that as soon as we're done here, as long as our massive store and doesn't fly through the Pittsburgh area. Holy crap. Hey, I want to give a shout out to some. I, I closed all my docs in the panic. Through everything, we we closed all of our documents, and I don't know what the plug. So without knowing, sight unseen, is it going to be the one that I thought it was? Oh, that's the one I was going to talk about anyways. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Pro Wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun. Our featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. I believe those are in the works right now. If Alex can give me an update, if that one went down or if it was going on this weekend or this week. I know we were setting up some stuff when I was out in L.A. Uh, with some friends of the Mayhem show to maybe join them on that podcast. Uh, but they're putting the smart back in smart mark. Please check out everything at OccupyProWrestling.com. And also the sister podcast over there, Chikar in 15 has returned. I know it was featuring uh, the Chikara event that happened this weekend in Pittsburgh as well as the one in Chicago for Anniversario. And uh, yeah, there you go. John Mox versus Pentagon Jr. is going to be awesome, says Tina. And what's up, Wheels? Um, But anyways, go check out everything at OccupyProWrestling.com and thanks for supporting the Mayhem Show over there. Hey, um, so there's other stuff going on. Matt, I promised you the floor for a moment to talk about it you've already gushed a little bit over some new japan stuff but very specifically it sounds like you've gone down a very deep new japan hole for a bit well yeah in my search for quality professional wrestling i restarted my uh new japan world subscription just in time to uh get all the way into the best of the super juniors 26 number 26 they've done this they've done this 26 times sword and so the, uh, the tournament's underway. I am all the way up to date on it. I have survived all of the all block shows when they do like eight tournament matches in one show, as opposed to the half block shows when you can kind of like cheat and you get like no wait no, ten. I'm sorry, they got, they got like twenty people in this, so you're dealing with so in the all block shows you're dealing with ten matches. The half block shows um, you're dealing with five matches you have to watch. And then there's an undercard that if you're me, you ignore. Because you got to get to the meat of things because you don't need to sit through all those tag matches unless there's something you need to see. Uh, anyway, so I'm all the way up to speed, and I, I'm telling you, sorry, I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot of guys that I just wasn't very familiar with that I'm getting to experience for the first time. Uh, Kanamaru, uh, the heel master, they call him over there. Uh, here's a whiskey bottle with him to the ring <laughs> and inevitably tries to spit it in the face of the other wrestlers. Um, <clears throat> El Fantasmo who is apparently the biggest DB on the face of the earth. Like, this guy is, like, pure evil. He's, like, giving little kids the middle finger in the crowd. Wait, isn't he's that... Taking, isn't he's that, taking hats from people in the crowd and flinging them off into the air like a very evil Magnum CK. And, um... <laughs> isn't, isn't that, um, uh, also known as, uh, King Cuerno? No, 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 no. El Fantasmo is some um, dude from England? No, Canada? Oh. Oh really? He, he's not wearing a mask, and he's a white guy. Oh, uh, and <laughs> sorry. I, and he's a jerk. All right, he is the ultimate jerk. Uh, he's in. He's got a beef with Will Ospreay. They had a match. It was awesome. Uh, he had an incredible match a couple nights after that against Rocky Romero, uh, and that's going to get me into my tangent where this tournament has caused me to fall in love with older wrestlers. I'm not going to call them old because that would not be nice. Uh, Rocky Romero. Mm-hmm. 
um, who's uh, he's kind of done it all over there, who's just a total OG um, in New, New Japan. Uh, and Rusuke Taguchi, the funky weapon Sorg, perhaps the you're familiar. Funky he's been weapon. Known to hit pe- he's been known to hit people with his ass from time to time. <laughs> that um, was, and I believe that is the funky weapon. Um, I witnessed, uh, I'm sure everyone out there is all all up to speed on the tournament. I witnessed Taguchi survive getting misted in the face and still win a match. (laughs) So I like these wily veterans like Romero and Taguchi. I'm really, I'm just completely drawn in by them. Uh, I I find myself wanting to see veteran wrestlers win, especially when there's a tournament with a lot of young guys. Uh, Yeah, so it's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, the, 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 the final boss, if you will, is, uh, Shingo Takagi. Uh, he's part of, uh, the LIJ, uh, Naito's, uh, group. Uh, he has not been pinned or submitted since he arrived in New Japan, Sword. This dude is a badass. He is barely under the weight limit, so he's bigger than everybody. <laughs> um, he's a barely super junior. And, uh, he's just killing everyone. So the big question of the tournament is, is anybody going to beat, uh, Shingo? Uh, I, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Uh, and on the other side, you've got um, uh, you've got El Fantasmo, you've got Will Ospreay, who's having like a, just a great match every single night. Jonathan Gresham is in this tournament, um, and he's been awesome just because he's he's well, you know, sorry, he's so unique, uh, and he's like he is like total Gresham in this tournament. He's doing all the moves and just chain wrestling these guys to death, oh, all the holds it. and whatnot. It's it's great. Yeah, um, Jonathan, if, you're, Gr- if you're looking for like a proper kind of gateway, if you're you know, more of an American fan, and you're looking for a gateway to get into it, try to check out uh, Gresham and Marty Skrull. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that was the first night of the show, and they just, you know, they had a great match. Just There's total, um, you know, pure Gresham, pure Marty. It's 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 fun. We just unleashed a lot of uh, Jonathan Gresham here in the Pittsburgh area on the Indie Wrestling uh, US uh, YouTube page. Um, with I think some more to come. I'm looking for um, a, it'll probably be a release of the near 40 minute match between him and David Starr. Which was incredible. Oh, I saw that. It is the yeah, match. It's an I think amazing you, match. You were there for that, right? Or did I, was I send there, it to yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, I was on the crew. It, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was just a joy to live switch that thing. Um, just just watching just art happen in front of you. Uh, so it, it, it's it's some good stuff. And uh, that will if it's not out, I don't think it's out there yet. But I think I think it will be in the very near future on that YouTube page. So stay tuned for, to that. Um, yeah, it's just. It's again, you know, we I, I I feel bad that we've kind of just complained about Monday Night Raw, and there's some things that we don't want to talk about coming up on WWE in the next several weeks. So this is a great time to have Double or Nothing. There's a great time to have this, you know, the the Super Junior weights uh, with New Japan. Um, this is a great thing to have. Jakar came to town for us here in Pittsburgh. You know, Angel Gate. We helped. Uh, uh, this this week, as we talked about earlier, uh, some great women's wrestling. I, I got to see two women's shows last week when I was in L.A. You know, that was, or two weeks ago, I guess it was, right? I mean, there's just so much good stuff happening out there. Yeah, if you're frustrated, don't complain about it. You know, put your, it's not a wrestling problem. It's a, you know, it's the companies that you don't like. It's, it's a WWE problem, problem so. right? Yeah, so put your money towards something else. You right. know, I, I what? gave my money to AEW. I'm giving my money to New Japan. You gave your, you know, because so I want to support them. I I have no problem supporting the WWE Network. I'm watching plenty on there. NXT is is still a great product. Uh, I love 205 Live. One day I'll get up to NXT UK. I always have something to watch. You know, like that's something that you know is worthwhile to me. I want to support those products and I support them with my eyeballs, right? By playing mm-hmm. those and watching those. Um, and they know that you watch them, so absolutely. That, I mean, you're, you're not just uh, you know, that's why into the void. That's, that's why I decided, I, you know, I, well, I didn't get too far into it because I not entirely sure because I think it was five and a half hours. Did you see the performance center combine video or any parts of it? I guess uh, that was on Sunday. Did you? Get I didn't com- get to it. I heard about it. Um, I heard that Riddick Moss is apparently some sort of like combine champion who can do all of these drills better than like anyone else on the roster. Right. Uh, and I'm suddenly now understanding why he's still down there. So, mm-hmm. um, he, he is, um, and I, and I saw his, uh, re-debut on, uh, NXT, uh, watching, uh, some back episodes today. So I realized that there's a NXT show this weekend, uh, <laughs> the takeover show apparently. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, so, uh, but NXT 25, I, I'm still mm-hmm. catching up, so I don't, I'm not really up on what the matches are going to be yet. Uh, I just watched, uh, Adam Cole and Matt Riddle 
uh, for instance. But I also just saw Velveteen Dream um, do the um, do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, oh yeah, the Star Spangled Banner. Dream. Oh, I'm awesome. sorry, was it Star Spangled Banner? Yes, it was great. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that was fun. Uh, so again, that's the kind of stuff I'm supporting. Seeing guys like that, seeing guys like Tony Nice, um, you know, that again that we've known and seen, uh, you know, doing some really cool stuff, and and you know not worrying about them being ruined on Monday night or whatever the case may be. It's unfortunate. We're going to watch that anyways, but we didn't pay for that. Right. And I don't think, exactly. I don't, th- I don't think canning WWE network, you know, for what's happening on Monday night is exactly again, the pay-per-views. I have not had a problem with the pay-per-views themselves and haven't for a while to be, qu- to be honest, um, as far as what they are. I mean, no, I, mean like- I would not be happy if I was dropping $50 on these pay-per-views. Let me don't get me wrong, but it's, again, you're you're getting the pay per views for free. You're you're paying dollars a week for NXT. That's yeah. right, and that's the way I'm thinking about it. Is really uh, NXT is worth it mm-hmm. by itself. Um, the pay per views. I hate to say, lots of times I'm not making it past the ten. <laughs> you got a bedtime. You got you got you got things to do. You got cast. You got, got cast to put to bed. Morning. I got wake up at five in the morning. That's for, right. For, for, now, I did like what I saw one person post on Twitter. It was like, hey, one thing I really liked about AEW, it was Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have to worry about, oh, it's getting close to 11. Oh, they're overrunning. Or like during WrestleMania, oh, we still have three matches left and it's 11 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I'm going like, to watch that on replay. On you know, the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's yeah. a lot of cool stuff happening. Oh. Um, but uh, oh yeah, Tina's uh pointing out there. That, uh, did you ch- catch the El Fantasmo stuff in the chat room there, uh, Matt? Yeah, Tina says thank you, Tina. El Fantasmo is from Vancouver, British Columbia, so that is where the worst people in the world are from. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and he says he works he works <clears throat> with the uh, ECCW promotion out of that uh, that area in Vancouver. So seriously, just go and. It's hard to kind of like jump right on, but if you got a New Japan World subscription, and you just want to cherry pick. Just go watch the El Fantasma matches and just bask in the absolute evil behavior of this man. It's, I, I was. It, it's, it has. There's zero. There's absolutely nothing you like about this person. I, I, nothing. He does flip. You're like, I hate this man. I was just it's, reminded it's that uh, by Wheels that I have a Jason Gory versus Crazy Steve match in my queue to edit this week. <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> I think it goes well. Also, Dan, uh, Don, Dan Hassan is another guy that I discovered this week uh, via the tapings. Uh, Missy was awesome and uh, went and taped the Revenge Pro Show uh, uh, two series ago. And uh, this is a guy that apparently runs with Derek Direction and uh, the, you know formerly Magnum CK with a production in um, uh, uh, AIW. Uh, face paint and he likes to lick people. Great. <laughs> I just a couple of gifts over on the Indie Wrestling US um, Giphy page if you want to go see a little preview of that. Again, there's a rendering should be up there uh, sometime Wednesday, I believe, uh, for a VOD purchase. But um, a lot of great stuff going on there. I, went to, I think that's everything I wanted to touch base on. Hey, I want to give a one last shout out to the Scarehouse. They have a great, you know, it's the off season. Um, uh, Katie was in here uh, earlier today. Uh, apparently, they're on build season, and she's uh, stinky uh, to go along with it. The, the, her words, not mine, but it's okay. It's the internet. Uh, <laughs> they got a lot of stuff going on there. They had a yard sale of bits uh, uh, over the weekend, and uh, they have a lot of cool stuff going on still. But you can go check it out, scarehouse.com, and more specifically, the scarehousepodcast.com. They drop some episodes here and there throughout the year in and around the industry you can get some behind the scenes going on over there again scarehousepodcast.com a member of the sorgatron media podcast network over there as well so go check them out and find out what's happening at the scarehouse and if you like wrestling go go there go to um the indie wrestling.us youtube Uh, uh, go look up hashtag wrestle scare and you can see some of our friends from the wrestling community like pb smooth the main event jinx going through the scare house and getting some reactions through that go check them out our friends at scarehouse.com and scarehouse podcast 
Com. So, with that, other than learning that I'm going to run from a damn lightning storm when I'm next to a window <laughs> and all this electricity and this giant metal pole with a with a microphone on it in front of my face, uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that the uh, the big screen at the uh, Rise Wrestling shows here in the uh, Pittsburgh area remain one of the uh, the great independent wrestling creations that I've ever seen. You uh, it's so well used, and they had a and you sent me the clip sorg of this thirty minute Iron Man match that they did uh, between the Reaper and the Iceman, and um, it's great. There's a it's, literally imagine a giant movie screen with a clock ticking down, big, old, easy to read. The whole crowd can see it, and they stuck the landing at the very end of the match. It was timed about as perfectly as you could hope for in an indie. 30 man a uh, 30 minute iron man match uh and the crowd was with them and it, it was a cool match so i'm glad you uh, sent that to me yeah I, I wanted to feature because you know rise has been really big about having these like big like 30 minute matches that don't feel like they're 30 minutes that the, and and I, I and and you well you know we you got to film a little bit of rise with a Y, uh, just a little bit ago, and one message I got at intermission was like, "Dude, this Tony Johnson guy has something going on," and he had a match that night with Lee Moriarty, who's been just on fire uh, lately. So, so I, I, I talked to Marcus on Sunday. I'm like, "Dude, I'm, I'm posting this match. You know, I want to put a 30 minute match up. You know, I'm thinking the Iron Man match. You know, it features Tony that I don't think a lot of people have have seen this guy in action." Uh, Matt Connard also turning in some fantastic matches in this promotion. And uh, yeah, it, and there's a giant screen. These guys actually have a show this Saturday. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, I definitely recommend going down to it. Uh, it's a little bit of a drive about an hour south of Pittsburgh itesself. Um, but again, it's an, old, it's an old movie theater. And, uh, and and they just are consistently, I can say this, you know, there's a lot of good wrestling shows in the area. But these guys are consistently the best wrestling mat action that there has been in the area for a good long time. Just consistently, since we started working with them in February of last year, like I can't, I don't think they've turned in a bad show yet, you know, and it's just been incredible to see. Yeah, I've liked everything that I've seen from them, like, uh, and uh, I'm excited to see what they can do. I mean, right now they're, uh, they've been doing a lot of their shows down in Lamont Furnace, right? So yeah, like, Lamont Furnace. And, uh, but I know they've been talking about maybe doing a show slightly closer to the Pittsburgh Metro. So I'm hoping that they uh, creep up here a little bit and more people get to see them. I think, I think you're going to see in the, in the coming months, they're going to be more than creeping. Uh, right. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there. I heard some good news and, uh, uh, you know, wait for the official announcement and the, all the, uh, uh T's to be crossed and the, uh, the I's to be dotted. But, uh, no, I think, I think you're going to be seeing some, a lot of rise, in the near future here. And I mean, they were already supposed to do something last year with Halloween. Unfortunately, some uh, unfortunate incidents in the area uh, with uh, tree of life uh, uh, precluded that from happening. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's, it, the, I think there's a lot of opportunity with those guys happening there and just, and there's so much going on with so many great new groups out here. Um, it's, it, it's incredible. Uh, Dave, what is your, well, I think I learned this in the last week. We've had a kind of a eventful last week, so things get kind of mushed in the brain. But um, I think this was last NXT, so I don't know if this was in, in the fact that the uh, TakeOver 25, mm-hmm. please, it's bigger than just a little place in Connecticut, mm-hmm. since we're not naming it. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a spoiler. I don't know how caught up you are, so we're going at regular. Don't worry NXT. about it. I'm sure I'm okay. sure I'm going to hear about it. But the fact that we're going to have Breeze versus Dream for the North American <gasps> no. Championship. And the fact is, as Breeze said in the promo, if you give your number out and no one calls you, maybe they don't want you. Whoa. So a beautiful callback to the Call Me Up Vince tights. From last wow. year? Yeah, yeah. I think late last year, yeah, maybe last early year this call year. Me up yeah. 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 Wow. And, and, and Breeze is coming in with the less exaggerated accent. Maybe mm. that's his normal speaking voice. He's not as as breathless as he was. And with the new haircut. Mm-hmm. But just him going toe-to-toe with Dream on the mic, you know they're going to have a great match. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I can't that, wait. I mean, the, the, I the mean, Gargano, 
Yeah. Um, um, Cole match is going to be great. The Baszler Io Shirai match is going to be great. Mm -hmm. The three individual matches are going to be great. Yeah, and Breeze has been to the dance, and 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 and, and oh, yeah. you know, I, I don't think he's failed at the top of the card. You know, very much so. I think he's 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 been there, done a thing, and they, just, they we just don't have a thing right now, right? Exactly. Um, so, yeah. um, so so what I learned, I learned that there is a treasure trove of some friend of the show action that I have not had the opportunity to see. Um, I'm digging through some footage for a project here uh, doing some conversions for something coming up here and i come across some some old some old footage with some old friends of the show um this is over on pwx network uh facebook and youtube there is baby brandon k taking on super hentai i can't tell you what super hentai is wearing in this clip this is this is some I need to find out some more stuff about this. Uh, this was in this TV wrestling collection that we're uh, converting, and uh, this is from 2000, I believe January 2000 is the date I put on this uh, from the beginning of it. And uh, this is like this is studio wrestling. This is it is it is filmed in a studio. Um, I definitely know that referee, uh, and, and it's, it's a uh, world legion wrestling. Somebody has to tell me a story about what this is about. Uh, you know, remember guys, I, I never watched local pro wrestling until 2006 here in the Pittsburgh area. And just this, you know, knowing that there's this and so much television happening around this too. Uh, you know, PWX having television in the, in the, uh, two thousands. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, 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 Matt, you know, we've been investigating, for a project, uh, you know, the television from way mm -hmm. before that, right? So, mm -hmm. but uh, man, there is some cool stuff in this. And every time I, I, I dig into this thing, um, I find somebody I know that I've never seen at that age, you know, in the late 90s, in the 2000, early 2000s. And it's been a really cool experience to kind of poke at those a little bit there. So, um, hopefully, uh, have some opportunities here in the near future for you guys to see that on some, uh, actually several different platforms, uh, from the way things are talking. Um, so looking forward to that. I know, I think we just handed it off and that might be popping up on a channel that you guys may have heard about, uh, in the recent news. So, um, looking forward to that. So from the chat room, you guys learned a lot. Uh, wheels learned that Luchasaurus killed Joey Janela yep uh also tina keys learned that wrestling is just awesome right now and a motivation for a kid to do uh chores to to is to meet bailey whoa there you go uh <laughs> uh there you go uh do, 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 do. and see if there's anything else i know I, I didn't i didn't mention earlier i meant to before things got crazy uh mad mike joined us from the plane <laughs> he's been uh <laughs> congratulations to him he is newly uh engaged so he's a keeper, ladies. <laughs> there you go. Um, so that's why he has been uh, out of action here for the last week. But it, it, awesome stuff happening with him over there. So with that. He's going to come back like The Miz next week. The most <laughs> cheerful, happy wrestling fan you've ever seen in your life. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Everything's he, great. Until he watches Raw. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyways, uh, also, uh, Alex learned that we could have asked Sami Zayn about AEW, but probably not <laughs> El Generico. El Generico's Twitter came back alive, guys. What's happening Somebody there? Somebody hacked them. Is that what happened? Something like that. Had to have been. I can't came imagine. Out of nowhere. <laughs> there was like no updates since like 2011. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. And then all of a sudden he's like back from El Generico, uh, yo, coming to you live from El Generico, Mexico. Um, I don't know. I'm just glad he's okay and he's yeah, still out. That's good. Somewhere. That's good. Are Keep we doing your thing, El Generico. I thought they were going to do a uh, dark side of the ring on him. <laughs> but where is El Generico? Yeah. Hey guys, a lot of stuff coming up. Like we mentioned, um, if you are in the area, I know there's a lot of Pittsburghers out there. PittsburghWrestling.com. There's events. Coming up this Saturday. Next Saturday will be uh, both Fight Society and RWA. Um, both both have been killing it lately. Uh, geez, that last Fight Society that I edited was like the best damn show since I started working with them. Since I started watching them, actually. Um, so go check all that stuff out. 
at pittsburghwrestling.com. We just announced scores of new interviews. We're going to come back strong in mid-June. Uh, we have uh, Pittsburgh legend Paul Atlas joining us. Bro, Hemeth is finally going to do an interview with us. I know he's just been hanging out playing video games. We're finally going to do some real shit. Uh, and also, um, uh, uh, Zach Gabriel. Sorry, new guy. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, uh, that just debuted at uh, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling. We're going to have one. And I'm try- I think everybody else in my head, we are still sorting times out. Um, if I, if I had my, we might in that first week interview about four or five different people. Um, so looking forward to that. And other than that, if you are in the Michigan or Rochester areas, the next two weekends, one, please tell me about pro wrestling in your area. I know I did find a show up in Flint, but I do believe I'm working until 7:30 that night. Uh, so I'm looking for some other options, either close by Ann Arbor, Michigan this weekend or on the Friday or Sunday. Uh, so I can catch them after my uh, my shoot. Um, a lot of stuff going on there, and maybe I'll... I don't know if I want to drive to Detroit. Let's put that out there, too. Um, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Matt Carlin's mainstream Matt on the tweeters. Thanks, Sorg. Probably talking about New Japan a lot. That's all we're talking about next week. That's right. Well, I'm gone. That's right. He's going to take over. It's a Matt Carlin's takeover on the show. He's going to be sitting in this chair doing this. In talking That's about right. wrestling, I, I, I okay. will talk about I will talk about all the wrestles, mm-hmm. uh, but we will um, carve out probably a good three minutes to talk about New Japan. So of course, like New Japan, next week is your week. So. At least, Dave Bonner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Yep, uh, tinyshutter.com and schedule right now is this week will be our three hundredth episode. We'll nice, nice. So just a little over seven years. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank and you. And of course, Sogatron on the Twitter. You can check out my travels. Uh, a lot of stuff has been going on. So uh, you can keep an eye out with that. And of course, all the wrestling things and whatever I'm editing lately. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going to be uh, uh, happening there. Um, thank you, everybody. I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Producer Missy, for setting some stuff up for me. I know we had to go take care of her on the break. Thank you, everybody, for dealing with it. And everybody staying up late here. And especially you, Dave, because you, as you mentioned, you have a very early morning. So <laughs> sorry coffee, about that. Coffee is my friend. Coffee is your friend. Hey, <laughs> man, I got like a 430 recording, got to edit, post it and then drive five hours to Michigan. I uh, am and be ready for a 10 a.m. shoot time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I know that deal. Oh, why do I do this to myself? But anyways, thank you, everybody, for joining us. This has been your mayhem. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.